It's a Defender! <laughs> but it drives very nicely. And it's way faster than any of these ever were. <laughs> well, an episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car we're featuring today, 1996 Land Rover Defender. Okay. So if it's a Defender, why did it say Raglan on it? Okay. Why is it nicer than any Defender I've ever seen in my life. Why is the interior so beautiful? Okay, it's a whole interesting story. Let's bring Joe Kamaski in. Joe, come on in. You're the founder of this company, right? The, fu the company is Raglan? Raglan. Okay. And you're a veteran? Yes, sir. And the whole company is veterans, isn't yep. it? So t t tell us how you got started. You rebuild these and you're a real veteran. You, had, you served time in Afghanistan, right? That's right. And well, thanks for your service, man. Thank we you. really appreciate it. I'm glad you all got back safely. So you guys decided to form your own company? A couple years ago, we decided we wanted to rebuild the Land Rover Defender and bring it back, modernize it, right. and build it with an electric powertrain. Okay, so this has an all-electric powertrain. All-electric, battery electric. Okay, and you guys did all the coding and all the computer? We wrote work? all the software from, from scratch by ourselves. Is that what you did in the military? No, we were engineers in the military. Right. Ryan. Uh, my co-founder was a submarine officer, and my brother, Will, was a MARSOC operator. Uh, and what is that? Marine Special Operations. Okay. Oh, that's great. You have the engineering background and the training to do this kind of work because it's it's complicated and it's not that easy. It is. We, and we don't have all the skills, but we, we built the first prototype by ourselves and that mm -hmm. was enough to, to bring in a team of experts to really beef up the software, do the fabrication that we needed to do. And now how does it work? Do I come to you with my Defender? Do you find Defenders, you build them and then sell them? Um, or or a combination of It's that. a combination of both. We do have a stock of vehicles. If you don't have your own Land Rover Defender, we can source that for you. If you do have a uh, family Defender that you'd like to get converted, we do that as well. Now, why these as opposed to Army Jeeps or any other uh, vehicle? We do love the Army Jeep, but this, this car was such an icon of adventure and exploration. Right. And I think for us, it was just, you know, it was the vehicle that needed to be done. As I remember back in the 90s, I mean, these are fine vehicles, but they had some, there, there were some problems with them. That, they were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what makes the electric powertrain for this such a good fit was the sort of r lack of reliability that these vehicles had. Right. I think they were loud, they were noisy, sometimes underpowered. So with this vehicle, it actually has three times the power, three times the horsepower and twice yeah. the torque. Remember, he said loud, unreliable, not me. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Because he's all the Defender guys. Hey, Leno, what are you doing? I'm, I'm just, uh, just telling you what I hear. Okay, there you go. Just what I hear. But there, uh, there's a certain amount of truth to that, obviously. But it is a great look. It's the classic English vehicle. And it's one of the great logos. I always love this. This always looks like uh, uh, the beginning of a Tarzan movie, you know? <laughs> they always have that kind of, kind of thing. The original engine was, what, a four-cylinder? That's right. This had a 200 TDI or a 300 TDI, usually, right. in this. In this right. Variant. And gas mileage was not that great. Not great. No. And not that much power. You've got no. way more power. So this started with about 110 to 120 right. horsepower. Now it has over 600 horsepower. It had about 250 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Now it has about 450. And all-wheel drive, just the original? All-wheel drive, all the time. Okay. And you've updated the interior. And it's, was there a big market for these? Did you build these originally for yourselves and then people said, hey, how do I get one of those? Or did you always start out as, this is the business, three veterans and this is what we want to that, do? That's how it started. It was sort of a uh, passion project. We wanted to build, in, we wanted a Defender for ourselves. We wanted to build it electric. And as we started building it, we started to see maybe there was a market for it. Back in 2020, when we started it, the world started shifting to electric. All the OEMs started doubling down on building. Every future car is going to be electric. And so it, it kind of just happened that this was the right time to start electrifying classic cars. You try to hire veterans in the company when you can as well? We do, yep. Our first couple wiring guys were veterans. Some of our fabricators were ve veterans early days. Well, I mean, that's what's good, because you got people you know you can rely on. And exactly. You've been, you've been tested under fire. That's a, you know, we're working in a, in a job. That's, that's about the best skill you can get. Well, it looks beautiful, I have to admit. So it has no transmission or transfer case or any of that, it right? It has a gear reduction on the motor and okay. a direct drive to the front and rear axles. Okay, but single speed, right? Single speed. Okay, but you Operates got, just like an automatic. Yeah, you just, just got enough torque to pull you through. And lithium ion battery? Lithium ion batteries, 85 kilowatt battery pack in here. Okay, so that's about the same as a Tesla, right? The first, as a single motor Tesla, is that exactly. about right? Exactly. Okay. 
And these are single motor, correct? This is a single motor. Okay. Do you do a dual motor? We as don't well? do a dual motor at the moment. Okay. So you still got a, a good, way more horsepower than you ever had. Way more horsepower, way more torque. And you're looking at what, about 228 miles, something like that? Somewhere between 150 and 200, depending okay. on the drive. Oh, okay. Tell me about the motor. These are from used Teslas? They are. They're from previously enjoyed Teslas. We, uh, we've done a lot of work to the motor. So because of the direct drive that we have, we needed to change the gear ratio inside the motor. Right. Nobody makes extra gears for these Teslas, so we had to engineer our own gear set for that. Okay. So we engineered our own gears. We reprogrammed the inverter that's mated to the, to the drive unit. Um, and, we, and then we've done all the software to, to make that work. Well, I just like the phrase, previously enjoyed. That's my favorite, as opposed to used car. Previously enjoyed. That, that, see, that, that's the salesman, that's very good. And electric engines are not, or electric motors are not like gasoline engines in the sense that they don't wear out at the same rate. I mean, these motors will run a million miles without, well, I've got a 1909 Baker electric over there. All I've done is change batteries. It just runs and runs and runs and runs. It, it, electric seems to last forever. That's right. You know, so that's pretty interesting. So getting a used Tesla is not like buying an old 440 Chrysler no. where you got to do the whole thing over again. That's okay. right. All right. And we do replace all the bearings, all the seals and the gaskets. Now, do you have any problems with Tesla with that? Or is it since you're getting them secondhand, it's not a problem? Nope. No issues with Tesla I at mean, the moment. I mean, previously enjoyed. <laughs> we may after this. Yeah. OK. OK. Um, so uh, take me around the vehicle here. What are we, obviously this is a full convertible. This all comes off. All that comes off. It's right. a custom soft top. Right. We use Connolly leather on the interior, which is the original Land Rover leather supplier. Did the original Land Rover have leather? Because it seems, would that be as durable as a, a heavy vinyl or something else? No, it definitely started with cloth yeah. and a more durable material. But right. we decided we wanted to wrap it up. We wanted to, to make things a little bit more modern. So it's easy in this. When people go off the road, it's by accident. You know? <laughs> You know, you see this in L.A., you see people driving these things, and if they get one wheel in the dirt, whew, oh my gosh, you know, it's the end of the world. But, I mean, the quality seems really very nice. And how many can you carry? Well, you can what, carry eight people on this thing if you want to, I suppose. I think this is a 10-seater. A 10-seater, okay. The classic tire in the back, very nice. I mean, you've, do you guys paint it and everything at your shop? We don't have a paint booth in our shop. We do outsource the paint work. Oh, okay. Can we open the hood and see what's under there? I don't Absolutely. imagine this much to look at, but let's see what we got. Uh, a beautiful work, gentlemen. Thank you. Nicely done. We've got a world-class fabricator in-house, yeah. Bobby, who's done all, the, all this work. You're looking at about 75% of the batteries right here, Okay. and the other 25% are more in the midsection of the car to keep the weight and balance of the car as more close to what it was originally. And the name Raglan, tell me what, what, what does that mean? What does it stand for? Raglan comes from a, a, a beautiful surf beach in New Zealand, right. very uh, corduroy perfect waves. Yeah. It's also a, the name of a, a famed army British soldier. Okay. Have you ever been to the beach? We haven't. Okay, as soon as you sell enough cars, you yeah, go to exactly. the beach. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's shut the hood again, see what we got. Uh, what, what are we upgraded? What kind of brakes are we using? Discs all the way around? Disc brakes all the way around. Yeah, They're yeah. upgraded. Are they, are they Land Rover uh, brakes? Or the front are, are Land Rover brakes. The rear are more modern Range Rover Velar brakes that okay. have an integrated um, electric parking brake. And has anybody from Land Rover seen this? Are they impressed? No one from Land Rover has seen this okay. yet. Okay, all right. Well, it's nicely done. I mean, I, I just like the fact that you guys are all veterans and you've started a business with other veterans. You know, it's just, it's, it's nice to see the camaraderie, you know, after the war is over, everybody comes home and, you know, sit around and tell stories and, <laughs> and start a company, you know, very good, very good. nicely done. Okay, anything else we need to know? What's different about the interior? There's no transmission, so you just have, what, park, neutral, drive, reverse, is that it? We put a uh, a wooden center console in here. Before the center console and the interior was more of just a, an afterthought with Land Rover. Right. So we tried to make it a little bit more functional. We put in some cup holders, a cell phone, a cell phone holder. Is this dash the same dash that was in it in terms of the gauges or are these aftermarket gauges? So this is the original dash. One thing that was really important to us is that we kept the heritage of this car and tried not to make this like a space shuttle with all screens everywhere. So we, you know, building period correct 
analog gauges was really important to us. So we, so we mimic the original Land Rover gauges, but they're CAN based. Was it really hard to, the Tesla coding and whatnot, to break it down and to transfer it, was that tricky to do? That was probably the hardest challenge of building this vehicle. There was no off the shelf software program that we could just install in the car. There was no motor controller that you could just make work with every, any motor that you put in there. So that was, uh, that took us almost two years to build that software from scratch. Okay. So tell me why it's better to have veterans building this than some Yahoo out on the street. Everything is on time and under budget. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the, the amount of love that we have for this car, we don't do any other vehicles. We do also do some work for the Department of Defense. Right. Some of the technology that we built in the software controller, we're actually using for the Air Force for some electrification of uh, airfield equipment. Right, and of course, being veterans, you have the dedication to get the job done and see it through. Well, I'm, I'm proud of you guys. I think it's great. Thank I you. Think it's great. You know, a lot of veterans come home, man. It's just, it's such a tough road, you know, with PTSD and all the things that happen to guys and, and women, too. You know, and, and the fact you guys have really got it together. That's not a put down. I don't mean it that way. I mean the fact that you get other veterans, you don't step outside, you know, use people you've used before to build something that's American, makes people proud, and you make it better than it was. Can we take a ride and see how good it is? Love to. Let's give it a shot. Uh, pretty much standard. Turn the key. What do I press? Put it on the brake. Drive. Oh, very linear pedal doesn't jump when you, you know. We spent, but, a, yeah. we spent a lot of time trying to, to keep the, uh, the pedal feeling a little bit more. Right. Why do you not keep it in regen? It's really just a personal preference. I, I think I'm just used to driving without regen. Yeah. So, coasting on the road. We just save brakes, and you might pick up, what, five miles, six miles? You get about 20% range back in city driving okay. with, with, with regen. So it's not a lot, but it does save all the brakes. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm so used to it. I got Teslas and other stuff. And it's great, because I had my other, my, my 2012 Tesla I had seven years. It still has the original pads, it's fine. Wow. And I drove it hard, but I was always off throttle, and I just, just when you come to a light, then you touch the brake to hold it, but exactly. the brakes last forever. I think that's one of the biggest changes for this vehicle is the lack of maintenance. Yeah. You know, did, did have a lot of, um, you know, necessary upkeep on the, on the old Defenders, and now, you know, almost none. So you really have to buy a wrecked Tesla. Buying a used Tesla doesn't do you any good because you're paying for all the other parts of the car that you'll never use. Yep, you know? yep. I suppose you could sell those, couldn't you? You have air conditioning as well? It does have air conditioning. Yeah. It's got heat. Oh, heated seats, all, all the modern. Right. Is that all out of the Tesla as well? Nope, that's, that's just high-end aftermarket. Right. You know, a lot of times when I've been in vehicles that have been converted, you touch electric, you go down a quarter inch, nothing, and then you jerk forward, you know. It feels very much like a gas pedal should. We spent a, we spent a lot of time with the throttle, throttle mapping and making sure that the accelerator, pel accelerator pedal felt smooth and natural. Right. A lot of time sitting in the passenger seat with a laptop and a driver driving. Are you always Tesla only running gear? I mean, if you run across a, a Kia or a Nissan that's electric, would you use that or you just... Since we began, there's a lot more motor manufacturers that are, were, right. were able to use off the shelf. Tesla was just the best bang for the buck right, early right. days. It has the, an incredible amount of power and for the size that it was and the architecture of how we wanted this car to be built, all wheel drive all the time. Right. It made a lot of sense for the Defender. Well, both Chevy and I think Ford now sell a crate electric motor. And that way the customer gets the advantage of at least a brand new motor that's never been used before. Exactly. I imagine at this point there's so much R&D 
that your profit margin per car is probably pretty small. It's, pretty, it? it's pretty small right now, yes. Because yeah, you're paying retail for everything. Yep, we don't have a whole lot of purchasing power as a right. small company. Right, right. The software that we built for this car and the R&D that we did for this car that enabled the government contracts that we got right. does give us more purchasing power. We will start to use brand new motors, brand new right. batteries. The world's changing so fast with electric. There's yeah. so many more. Every day there's 10 different new motor manufacturers, right. inverter, con controller, battery manufacturers. The batteries are the thing that's changing the most. Absolutely. Just All more efficient, smaller. More efficient, smaller, different chemistries, right, right. different cooling techniques for each each different type. And you're always water-cooled batteries, no... no These air. are water-cooled batteries. Like in my 1914 Detroit Electric, we're running air-cooled because, I, you know, I'm not going to be using it under high, you know, on the freeway and things like that. With this vehicle, because we had so much space, which you don't normally have in an electric vehicle, we were able to put an excessive amount of cooling capacity for the motor for different weather right. conditions. So, you know, we've got twice the radiator that Tesla has. We've got variable speed pumps and fans that are working for, you know, when you're going to take this vehicle in a places that it was originally intended to go, now you it, still have that capability. Is your cooling thermal siphon or is it an electric pump? We have an electric variable speed pump. Okay. And we have two different, this car has two different loops. So it has the batteries on an isolated loop. Right. And it has the motor, the AC charger, and the DC-DC converter, which are all water-cooled on, on a separate line. And no herky jerkiness in the ride in the drive chain. When I'm on and off it, I don't feel it, you know, engaging and disengaging. You know, it's nice. Does it still feel like an old car to you, or does it feel? I mean, to me, a lot of it is sort of what you see. To me, I, I always hate it when someone takes an old car, makes it electric, and puts it in a digital dashboard with a, you know, some kind of fancy modern <laughs> digital stereo. On it. Well, so what about this as an old car? I mean, to me, it's like. The dashboard is, it's like you want to marry a pretty girl. You're going to be looking at that face over the breakfast table the rest of your life, you know? So you want to go, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I like looking at and seeing a classic gauge and a classic look, but having the modern power. I mean, if you rebuilt this thing and it had the exact same feel and power of the original Defender, I'd just buy the original Defender, <laughs> you know? So, so to me, yeah, I like the look of it. I like the dashboard. Nicely laid out. There's no kit car feel to it. That's my problem with a lot of electric conversions. Is a kit car thing, you know, the, uh, the radio doesn't sit quite straight. You know, it, it, it's in the dash at an angle a little bit. Or, you know, there's always something that's a little off, whereas this seems to have precision to it, which is very nice. Try to spend a lot of time with the fit and finish of the car to make, make things go together and seem And here's as something amazing. Was. The horn actually works. And how many people build cars come here and I go, where's it? Oh yeah, well, you haven't hooked up the horn yet. Well, why? People get so excited to finish the car, they just don't hook up the horn. <laughs> I would say out of 10 vehicles, three at least, the horn doesn't work because, it, <laughs> because they're just, oh yeah, yeah, we forgot about it. Your top speed is what, about 105, something like that? Well, mathematically, it's well past that. Like oh, right really? now, you're at 8,000 RPM. 7,000 RPMs and right. it goes to 18,000. Right, okay. We got the aerodynamics of a Defender. <laughs> Boy, you just feel how aerodynamic modern cars are, you know. You take your foot off that gas, that windshield's an air brake. It's almost straight up, so. But it drives very nicely. And these are kind of an all-purpose tire on here, isn't it? Sort of a, kind of a dirt street tire. Exactly, yeah. yeah it's sort of an all-terrain. That's what I mean. I, I, I mean, I can feel it. It's got a little grip when you need it, but it's, it's yeah, trying yeah. to be not so loud on city yeah, streets. Yeah, it's like driving the snow tires in the summer. You know? Exactly. I think the Defender requires a little bit of an aggressive stance, but nothing right. that's too much. Right, yeah. I don't know if you do feel the crampness of the upfront seating capacity, but... I'm not a big guy. I'm 5'11", but I've got the seat all the way back, and I can go back a bit more. But it looks like there's plenty of room to do that if you wanted to. So Land Rover, back in the day when they built this car, they moved the seats intentionally three inches forward to maximize payload capacity. Right. I think as we built this this car with an electric motor, it felt like 
kind of a natural progression for where the Defender was. Yeah. People started putting V8s, Corvette motors, and if you look back in the history books, the first Land Rover was built off willy parts. Yeah. All of the, the chassis and the axles were all willy parts. Uh, yeah, you do get a vintage feel to it, but it's more visceral. You're, you're looking at it, it's looking around you. The ride feels obviously as it would have been back in the day. We intentionally didn't put too many markings on the car that let anybody know that it's electric. Right. So it is, it is fun to pull up at lights sometimes. Yeah give it a little extra juice. Well, that's sort of a 90s thing. When the hybrids first came out, remember some car, hybrid, written on the side, it would have all the, the things pointing at its front wheel drive. I mean, I like the fact that if you don't know, it, don't worry about it. Yeah, if you know, you know. And you're a pilot as well? I am, I got my pilot's license in Alaska after okay. the Marine Corps. Oh, after, so you were not a pilot in the... Uh... I wasn't a pilot in the Marine Corps. I was a combat engineer in the Marine Corps. Oh, okay. I think part of that aviation training in Alaska really shone through in some of the engineering and how we work the weight and balance of this vehicle and the moment. It was super important to us to have the same dis weight distribution in the vehicle as it was originally, and right. if we could improve that at all, we did. Now, combat engineer, what does that mean? Are you, are you fixing weaponry? What, what does that mean? So we built bridges and roads. We were sort of the engineers of the Marine Corps to oh, allow the infantry guys to do whatever they needed to do. So if we needed to build a bridge, build a base, right. clear a road with explosives. If there's a bomb in the road, we'll, we'll blow up that bomb and then right. we'll rebuild that road right. so that the Marines can get in where they need to get in. Yeah. At the end of the day, just this car, it just feels like a car you can just plug in, right. put the key in, and drive. Now your motor temperature is about not quite 50. No, that's... It sits somewhere around 45 to 55. Are the fans thermostatic or are they on all the time? No, they're variable speed and they're, they only come on when the temperature hits a certain point and yeah. it needs to cool the motor or the batteries right. down. So most of the time the fans don't run just because the, the way that these lithium ion batteries are built, yeah. they, don't get, they don't generate a lot of heat. Most of the heat is actually generated in the motor and the inverter side. When we went back to, to redo the cooling system and the heating system on this car, originally it used the coolant from the motor to heat a block to then heat the cabin. Right. But because our motor and inverter don't get hot enough, you have to use an electric car ceramic PTC heaters. Right, I see. You forget what a high center of gra gravity needs. <laughs> I know. Well, this is pretty surreal to have you driving our car. We're pretty excited. Well, it's great. It's an honor to do it. I mean, it's a lot of fun and. I like the whole ethos of the company. I mean, to a lot of customers, I think the military aspect of it is important. It shows you have a commitment, you can finish a job when you start it, you know, you work with other men and women who feel the same way. You know, everybody has a purpose. You know, it's a funny time. Any other time in American history when you're at war, the whole country's involved. You know, you can't get plywood, you have to have a victory guard. We live in an era now where you can have guns and butter. You can have war, uh, and you can live as if there's no war at all. So consequently, you got men and women like you guys that are fighting, and the rest of us sitting there living our lives. It doesn't really cost us anything, you know? So when you get home, you should be rewarded. And I, I think, you know, having people take an interest in a company like this, going's never going to get rougher than it was under those circumstances. You know? <laughs> it is true. It puts things in, pers in perspective, you know? It's like, yeah, yeah, it really does. You always have more time than you think you do, and no one's dying, so. Yeah. See, if it was me, I would drive with the regen all, on all the time. So you I want like to put the, it on? Yeah, where is it? Which Hit the mode button in the middle. So there's not a ton of regen at high speeds, but once you get down towards a light or a stop sign, you'll right. start feeling it kick in. I've got a car in the garage called the... Owens Magnetic, 1916. Oh yeah? It's a gas engine, drives an electric motor. Oh wow. And when you drop below like 18 miles an hour, woo, the regen kicks in and puts more energy back in the battery so you don't waste the brakes. Now being an electrical vehicle, how about when you try to forage a stream or go through water? Is all the extra componentry down below like that? We built this car to be as capable as the original Defender. So all of our wiring, low voltage and high voltage, is beyond motorsport spec and able to be submerged. That's, and since you don't have a carburetor, it's not like you'd be sucking in water, so 
Exactly. It's all sealed. Yeah. It's all sealed. The limitations is really just the door seals. Right, right. Well, Joe, thanks for bringing them to buy. We really appreciate it. I think you and the guys are doing terrific work. Thanks. And once again, everybody, we all appreciate your service and your dedication. If you can bring that same thing to these cars, I think you'll do just fine. So Thanks, Jack. So, really appreciate it. Hey, you got a chance to buy it from a veteran. Please do it. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.